Right, g'day guys. Uh, today I'm going to get straight into this. I've got a man, Josh. He's in the States. And nobody uh, around his area is able to set up his car or tune his car. And we're going to look through his Link ECU. We're going to do some setups. We're going to have a chat. And hopefully he's going to learn some stuff about his car and how it's set up and, and how we can make it better. The we're going to turn on some logging and we're going to move forward so he can do some tuning and I can do some tuning from where I am sitting at my place inside because the weather's terrible here and I don't want to go to the workshop. Um, I've got his program here, so I, he sent me this his link program. I've opened it in PC Link. He's running a G4 Extreme. And I'm thinking that this is from the base files, possibly. I'm not actually sure where this tune came from. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to have a look at a few things here. Uh, I'm going to sort of babble on it myself. And um, hopefully we'll kind of make this sense, make some sense. So I've come into the statistics. Um, hasn't used the rev limiter a whole lot. Max engine speed possibly had something go a bit funny there because I don't think it's revved to 11,000 RPM. 1,076 kPa. It's got up to 95 degrees and the air temp's been to 77, so that, that's not bad. Voltage 15.3. 600 starts, some stores, and some running time. Okay. So what I'd actually like to do there is I would like to um, clear statistics. It's not going to do it here because I'm not connected to the car. So that is something that I would like Josh to do. It's clear those statistics. So we can do some monitoring. Also, you can see here the max duty cycle um, hasn't been too high at the moment, so that's, that's looking pretty good. Um, we'll go up to the configuration. We'll just, we're going and that does point towards it was a VVTI base tune. We might just grab a VVTI base tune. Um, that's my one. So over here, I will open up a VVTI base tune, shall we? I just got to go back a little bit. Mm, back more. Base tunes. Let's have a look here. Extreme. One UZ VVTI. Let's have a look what we got in here. Can can have a bit of a comparison. See those numbers are way smaller than what's in. Josh's one. We'll do this another way. I'm going to go here. And I can go File, Compare. So we've got that. I've got to find where my one is hidden. It's in the G4 folder. It's in the G4 Plus. It's in the base. No, it's on the can. It's in the base maps. VVTI. Base. It's funny, it's got statistics in the base map. Uh, we'll look at some tuning here. So this is the fuel file difference. So Josh's is at 78. The base one is at 26. There's going to be a difference in the setup of the fuel anyway. Um, over here. So Josh's is in modelled, and this one is in traditional. So somewhere... Someone's done some swapping around, um, swapped it over to modelled, which is what I prefer, and I probably should explain that at some stage, but very briefly, the ECU in modelled knows how much fuel is actually going in, it knows that you're running on petrol, and it's aiming for a target, and it believes that your fuel map is tuned to your target. So later on, you can just change the target, and the ECU will calculate the changes required 
to give it the correct airflow ratio. So straight away we can see there's some differences. It's been altered. There's another one that's... I'm just going to close this compare in a moment. Just I'll just go over here. We've got this one here. So this is a tune that I've done with an extreme. No, sorry. It was a Thunder twin wideband on a 3UZ. And... I... Uh, Well, I want to compare this tune, which is in modelled, against um, Josh's one on his car. So we're just going to close this file compare because these don't compare modelled to traditional. So compare close. And that compare function is really handy when we are um, when we've done some tuning, we've made some changes, and we want to see what changes we've we've made to it. Mine's a bit deeper. This time I've got to go all the way in here. So Adam's 3UZ. So this is a, a 3UZ Hilux. I've got this one here. Okay. So here we have some numbers and you can see they're a lot closer. We're, we're modeled against modeled. Map and map. Engine capacity is different. Base fuel pressure is, it's within 12 kPa, so very, very close. All the stuff is the same there. Injector setup is different. <coughs> so it's set up on Josh's at 275. Mine set up at 265. My one was a flow check, and of course it's, it does rely on the the flow bench being accurate and timing it correctly. We're just going to go to the internet for a moment and we've got, I did a search for injector sizing and here we've got out of Lextring, 1UZFE, uh, 251, 2UZ and 3UZ, 275. This one, there is a 1UZ VVTI uh, the air assisted injector and they've listed it as 255 or 252 so so close this one 3UZ and I'm using 3UZ the pink 3UZ and 1UZ uh, VVTI are the same injector they changed in 2003 so they're saying it's around 270 cc's they think And I've actually got, while we're on here, while we're on the internet, I've got a AFR chart conversion chart, which we can uh, reference back to as well. So, back to our injector sizings. This is 275, this is 265. Within 10 cc's, they're, they're close enough. I prefer the 265 because that's what I've tested them at, and that's what I've set my tune up for. So I'm actually going to go in there, and I'm going to change this one. Minute change, and at the end of the day, for what we're trying to achieve at the moment, um, we want a reasonable running car. That that doesn't concern me that that's a little bit different. It's 10 cc's. Draw a band, aren't they? Uh, going down here, though, overrun, oh, closed loop lambda. No, let's look at the fuel table. So here I've got 46. Josh has got 78 in the middle of the map and you'll see the, the scaling on the side similar I've got so I've got a an extra one in here so let's see mine's the bottom one I've got a 500 a thousand a 1250 he's got a 500 a 750 so these ones they were very similar as far as his uh, 750 and 1000 is close and my 1200 is, is close but they're not close to each other as far as my tune against Josh's tune. From 1500 they become accurate again and they, they match up. And we go down and look at the, the top end 
you know I'm there's 50 numbers different up in this top zone here that is an a phenomenal difference absolutely massive and he, he did suggest it was running rich at the top end um, now Josh did send me um, some logs we're gonna grab that so that's the base tune I'll just I'll open another one really to confuse us here I'll grab another one of these and let's look at some a little a little bit of logging uh, open log file he sent me a download so I uh, sent me a file so we'll just do uh, driving operating conditions and here's just a really quick basic look at it lambda and you'll notice here um, so this is an, uh, a, a D cell condition um, the injectors will be turned off and we've got very lean there we've got this little spot here see it goes extremely extremely rich the, the mixtures up here I'm going to spread that out and as we drop into it 0.6 so when he it gives it a bit of right at that point it's actually gone into overrun it should have closed injectors off we can look at that though what have we got in here uh, injector duty cycle no data um, dwell time left hand positions so for, for shifters uh, for the VVTI so there's, there's a lot in here manifold gauge pressure no data we can add items to this list as well so we could say we could check injected injector um, the injector status so we could just click in there look on properties um, I could add a parameter but, but in the logging here we've only got seven eight items eight items logged we don't have a whole lot of logging so we can't tell what the injectors are actually doing at a particular moment so that causes a problem when we're trying to remote tune we don't have a lot of information in the logging that we really do need to set up what we're doing so we're going to need to set up some logging as well and we need to look at why these numbers are, are vastly different we're back here again fueling and the lambdas so, so say in a cruise situation i'll we'll try and find a spot where he's doing oh, a few revs so he's doing a few revs here we'll open that up uh 4000 rpm 28 percent throttle um 0.85 mixture so it's actually running reasonable mixtures at that point but I can't see how much trim the closed loop system is doing and so this is a concern for me because it may be set up close or the closed loop lambda may be pulling a heap of fuel out we can look at that closed loop we'll go over here and we'll compare the closed loop closed loop lambda is here uh, I should say whether I'm right clicking or left clicking shouldn't I but I probably need to right left and right on my mouse pad so here's here's the setup so Josh's one is on auto mode wideband and mine's on stosh mode stoshiometric mode on wideband this this means that my one will tick slowly drop the mixture down where Josh's one makes a calculation to the lambda target and quickly makes that adjustment and will make very big adjustments very quickly so we could actually be driving pretty much relying on the auction sensor to make the adjustments to make the car drive nicely that isn't what you want we want the least amount of closed loop as we can within five percent is is ideal um, and it's always going to have some fluctuations I very rarely go above 15 this particular vehicle I did go to 20 but if I look at logs of of that vehicle hardly ever does it go 
to um, a 20% trim. That's just out there. Doesn't normally do it. And Josh's is set up at 30% trim. So that really isn't ideal. I haven't looked at the gain. And he's got massive, massive gains on it. So it's trying to adjust very quickly. Massive gains. If I use this little arrow, I go back a screen. And again, massive numbers. Oh. There is some help file in here too. Uh, so if I do that same thing on configuration over here. So if I look at, say, closed loop lambda. Here's closed loop lambda. Here is some information about them. So if you're trying to find it. Um, you see here it says typical value of 15% for the trim. Uh, gain control. Typical value is 2. I set mine low at 1. And Josh's, uh, see, gain control, gain control. Typical value of, of two, he's at uh, four and five. Massive. Uh, we can go back, just click back like this. Lambda rate. Lambda rate. Um, that's in auto mode. Those, those are massive, massive numbers. Uh so we do need to make some changes in that department. Um, ignition table. And these are kind of similar. I've got a bit more timing down low. You can see here I've got, um, in this area, I've got 18 and 20. Uh, his is back at 14. So mine is a little bit more advanced. I should note we're running on... Um, my one was set up for a 95 or 98 fuel over here. That's equivalent to the US of a 93. So we're pretty similar in fuels. If anything, um, mine being on 95 is a little bit more conservative. So when it gets the 98, um, uh, the, yes, and my numbers are quite conservative for what I was doing. And Josh's are even further further conservative, and that can be a problem. Engine protect, auxiliary outputs, of course, are different. And so this is this is a problem when you just grab a, a base map or a startup file because the outputs can be different. I'm just going to look at this GP. Oh, mine's a speedo. So this is where you can't compare. So, for example, this is a um, the AVIS flap it could be labeled and my one oh, my one was on an ignition output somewhere I can find my AVIS here this is my tune of course mine was on a thunder um, it's going to be on auxiliary outputs and I've got a lot more Auxiliary 3. Okay, so here's another thing to check. And this is sort of some checks we do before we even start really making adjustments. What I want Josh to do is to check the AVIS flap. Um... I am going to need to make some notes because there's going to be too much for me to remember. So just hold there for a moment. I'll get a pad. Just got to check, check live here. Oh. Just checking people coming to the shop. Right, we're good again. I was actually hoping to do this live so Josh could be watching, but it's wet and cold outside and not enough uh, not enough data working because all my internet's through my uh, through my through my uh, cell phone. 
So we're going to Josh check A V I S. So that's that's the flap on the intake manifold, back of the intake that is actually moving. Um, I want to calibrate the TPS and the map sensor to know 100% they are correct. And we're going to, the other thing we're going to do is we are going to turn on some logging. And that, that's the main thing, because I want to see how much trim he's got. Um, because I actually think it's relying on the trim greatly, absolutely massively, uh, to make this vehicle run nicely. So we're going to get rid of that compare. We're going to... Uh, Compare close, and we're going to go through um, and make a few changes here. Actually, no, I'll we'll just, I'll just, I've never tried this before. Adjusting the tune while it is in compare mode. Okay, I'd seem to be able to adjust the injectors there. Um. Let's just give that a try, shall we? Right, oh, uh, it turns out we can actually adjust stuff when I've got the compare function on, which is kind of cool. So you, that's inconvenient, isn't it? Right, oh, I've been interrupted like often happens with my life. But it's neat to know that we can adjust some of these numbers when we're in compare function. Can go along and match some numbers. I can highlight all of them. I can go to there to enter. That's pretty cool. I like that. Mm -mm -mm. So I've got some of this I can do. I can whip through and change some numbers in the cold start tables. But that's not really where my main focus is at this point in time. My main focus is why are our fuel tables so so different so that's the main concern i'm happy enough with the timing maps close enough our oh, vvti um down here vvti control uh, this one's got a lockout at 20 my this is at 60 Oh, and he didn't notice it had something funny. We're going to change that. We're just going to bring the lock up out, up to 60. And the target numbers um, are a little bit different. Again, I'm not too concerned about that at this stage. My main focus is the fuel map. And any tunes like a development. And it's really tricky when I'm on the other side of the world to where this, where this car is. So for me, the big step is to look at what's going on with the fuel. And they're vastly, vastly different. Um, I was going to show you the triggers. Now if I see big differences in timing maps, um, and these ones aren't big timing differences, I would pop down uh, to the triggers. Triggers. And you can see that they are the same. Um, I would check the trigger setup and check that the offset isn't changed, um, where the base timing is. Because that gives me a fair idea of what's going on. Okay, we're going to um, get back into this fuel setup. Probably for me, the, the main thing right now is to add some logging. I want to know some more about what's going on with this car when it's driven. So we're going to, we've got, we're in compare function. Uh, that's the compare there, but it's, Josh's is the main one. 
logging. We're going to go to logging setup. And, and if we look at these log files, which is over here, there's a log file. Um, this is pretty much all the data that's going in. Engine speed, map sensor, engine coolant, air temp, uh, barometric pressure sensor, ignition timing, TP, and battery voltage. Now, actually, TP and map sensor. I have had some time to go through this tune. We'll just we'll just close it for a moment. And I noted that the the map sensor was different, so that's found in analog inputs. Down here, analog inputs. It's got a Titan map sensor, um, and we've got TP main and TP sub. So I would really like to know that the TP main um, is calibrated correctly. So I've popped that on the list to talk to Josh about. That's a really simple process to check that that's working like it should. Um, ECU controls, TPS setup, you do the TPS setup, and then map sensor calibration. He does seem to have that right. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, there's also some uh, wide bands in here, and we need to confirm that they are on the correct places, um, going to the correct cylinders. So I was just looking for some information, and I couldn't find it where I was expecting to find it. What I was wanting to do is, is allocate or check the allocation of the wideband sensors to the cylinders. And it wasn't in the software. So even I need a bit of help sometimes. So quickly looking in the help browser. Probably pointing towards my hands doesn't really help you. But it says here... Um, Storch mode uh, narrow band, storch mode wide band, auto mode wide band, and it says in here that the algorithm is is actually running off the lambda average, so it doesn't know which cylinder is which, it doesn't care. It takes the two wide band inputs, averages them, and then makes its calculation. We're going to go away from that. We're going to go away from auto mode, and we're going to go to storage mode. Um, I find it works better, and is less likely to give like um, inaccurate fluctuations or, or like a, a rapid calculation because something else is happening at the moment that the ECU makes its calculation. <coughs> so, um, if we change this to wideband storage mode you can see um, down here this is dual channel off this is dual channel on dual channel allows us to set up cylinders to where it wants to go to the right places um, and allocate sensors to those cylinders so if I turn this on it will spit out some sensors here so it says cylinder one is on bank one and then we can allocate the sensors appropriately i haven't actually talked to josh about where he's got his sensors um and um so we will come back to that um at the moment i'm not going to adjust it until i've talked to him and this as i said is a, is a development process so we're just going to put it back the way you had it for the moment I'm going to add some logging, which is where we was at earlier. So we're going to turn some logging on. Logging, logging setup. PC logging has quite a lot. And there's a lot of stuff in there that you don't really need. So it's, it's often worthwhile going through and, and trimming that list. For example, uh, down here we've got, um, I saw some e-throttle. Uh, gear shift count. Well, if there's no speed sensor going in, I haven't seen a speed sensor. 
then what's the point of having a gear shift count in there? So we can just remove that item. Injected duty cycle is good. Fuel consumption, if you're kind of wanting to worry about that. Air per cylinder measured. So you can go through ethanol temp. Don't need that. Ethanol percentage. He's not running on an ethanol, so you don't need that stuff. All the lambdas, all the extra lambdas, we don't need those. And that can make quite a difference to um, the, the information that you have if it simply isn't there. If it's not set up in the ECU, then there's no point gathering that information because it's just taking up memory. However, if there's a chance you'll need it, you're better to have the, the data and not need it they need the data and not have it. So consider that when you're setting this up. ECU logging. Okay. It's just going to be on. It's enabled. Let's go through and see what we've actually got here. Oh, we've got some knock levels. We've actually got some battery voltage. Lambda 1, Lambda 2. The Lambda target. Ignition angle, so there's not a whole lot there. Oh, closed loop fuel correction. And one and two. Oh, let's see if I can actually pull that up. And of course, because I haven't set this up from scratch, there's a bit of time to set everything up. If I, I go fueling, I don't have fuel table one, and I don't have the acceleration fuel. So we're going to start a new page. And I'm going to call this. Oh, we've got fueling over there. No, we'll just do it in the fueling one. I'm going to right click properties. Let's add some corrections. Add group. Add parameter. Look at this. Closed loop lambda fuel correction. And look at that. And I'd like add group, add parameter, the lambda target. AFR lambda target. And I'm going to put it's not going to have an average, it's going to have hmm. Lambda 1, Lambda 2. Let's just grab both of those. We'll have a look. Okay. We'll push OK. We'll see what we get here. It is tricky with this software. You do get it quite tight. Corrections at zero. What's the correction there? 19% at that point there. So to get it close to the target, it's doing a 19% fuel, pulling out of 19% fuel. So that does confirm my suspicions of uh, what's going on. With that oxygen sensor doing huge adjustments. 18% there. Over here. Minus 24%. 24% fuel. So. Once he gets up in the revs. Let's have a look what's he doing there. 2400. It's pulling out masses amounts of fuel. 25% there is it there. We'll bring this up on another page. I'll, I'll just start a new page. Push OK. So we've only got Lambda. Uh, no. Logging. Let's put a navigator in it. Add group. Add parameter. We'll just give that an RPM, 
engine speed, excellent. Push OK. Spread it out. And drop it down. So there's a navigator. Uh, logging. Time plot. Add group. Add a parameter. And let's put the... See, this should... Lambda target 2, correction 2, should be at 0. Correction and correction. We'll put them both on the same one. We'll add a group. We'll add a parameter. Target. And then we'll add... A, we'll put those two... Um, Lambda 1 and Lambda 2 together. And we're going to put a TPS on it. And this is slow, a little bit painful. Add a group, add a parameter. And I would like, personally, I would like manifold gauge pressure. Um, if we look on the tuning here, oh, I'll just grab another map. So I like on my fuel map to be tuned on manifold gauge pressure. And that takes into account atmospheric pressures as well. And this is the map that I'm going to be using as my reference. There's a dual map facility. So I'm going to um, make it so I can set up the dual map. And that might be a way that um, Josh can just flick it over on a virtual and tune up his, his engine, get it set up. And uh, I'm going to call that good for the moment. And we'll stretch this out and let's have a look. And correction two, as you can see, is just a straight line. It, it's not working off, because it's on auto mode, it's only got the one correction. So we'll just get rid of that. I've confirmed that uh, we only have the one. Take that, remove it, okay. So this top line here is the amount of fuel it's putting in and pulling out. And if we get in here, look at this. Uh, so there it's okay. Um, Throttle's closed. It's um, it's 1100 RPM. I haven't got an RPM at the top here. If you if you want to do it in a list of runtime values, we could actually put some runtimes down the side if you really want it. Um, we can put in that. We can go um, logged value list. And we can add a parameter. So we can put fuel correction 1. Yes. Then we can put lambda average. Uh, no, that's the target, sorry. And then we can add another one. Lambda 1, lambda 2. Yep. And then we can put our TP in it. Not toilet paper, that's um, throttle position. It's under analog. Throttle position. And then we can put our map. Map. Give it an adjustment. Take it, check it over the side. I want the list to go the other way.
Not quite how I wanted it. And we kind of got some numbers here. <laughs> lambda 1, Lambda 2, target, correction, TP, and um, map pressure. And they're also listed up on the screen up here, which is where I prefer to look at them. But we're looking here as we're coming along. My mouse has been playing up a little bit on my laptop. It's taking a hiding. And he's blipped the throttle. And he's telling me about the blipping of throttle. And it comes back down and then it, it doesn't want to idle properly. The RPMs drop off horribly. And you can see it goes incredibly rich. And that'll also be because of acceleration enrichment fuel. I'm not sure we had acceleration enrichment fuel in the list. So we'll see if there's an acceleration enrichment. Add group, add perimeter. It's got warm up enrichment, but not acceleration enrichment. So we're going to add that to the logging as well. So what we can see by this is the fuel map is so far out that it's relying on the oxygen sensor to make the engine run nicely. So we need to sort that. Um, when he's actually driving in a normal state of drive, and it, it would be nice to have some speed. I like a speed input and a nice RPM. So he's doing 2,500 RPM. There's only a little percentage of um, adjustment right there. But the mixture is uh, very, very rich. So the car generally is very rich. So I'm a little bit less concerned about my numbers being where they are. Okay, let's get some logging set up in here. And we'll go through and put some stuff in. Duty cycle. Yes, I want that. Oh, I might actually just uh, go through this list first. Engine speed. Yep, I want some engine speed. Ignition angle, good. Airflow target, yes. Lambda 1, good. Map, good. Coolant temp, air temp, barometric pressure. Yep, that can be on a very low hertz. TP, good. And we're going to step that up in the hertz. I want lots of hertz in that one. Battery voltage, it's good. Lambda two is good. Warm up. Correction, correction two. Now correction two at present isn't doing anything, but when we change the setup, it may be doing something. So I'm going to leave it in there. And some knock levels. Well, I don't actually know if knock's turned on in the setup. So there's another thing for me to check. So we're going to go through here, injector timing, wake up status, just in case, yes. I like the lambda statuses, um, and I like that because I want to know that the oxygen sensor is adding fuel or removing fuel. So it's quite good for me to have that. Lambda fuel, yes, yes. So I'm just going to drop off for a moment, going to go through and pop some numbers across and some logging across. And we'll come back to you once I've done that and we'll look at a few other things. Righto, here we have our new list of logged parameters. And hopefully I've got everything that I need in there. I've included VVTI positions, uh, manifold gauge, 
um, ignition status, ignition tables, fuel table status. And now I'm going to go back and start changing some of the, the tune. At this point, I'm I'm tells me to store. Yes, good. I'm going to save as. It wasn't um, in downloads. I'm going to pop it in its own folder. It's G4 Plus. It's a tuning map. And right at the bottom, web info. And we'll start a new folder. Okay, now we're actually doing some tuning. I'm not going to change it on uh, to staunch mode at this point. Uh, Josh is going to allocate some cylinders once he tells me what cylinders are running which oxygen sensors, and we'll, we will change that over. I'm going to look, and I'm going to work quite quickly here. Um, I'm going to find my target, lambda target. And the lambda target I've got in there, the set, it's quite a nice road set. Um, what I'm actually going to do to start with is, is put this one in. Export to my clipboard. Again, left, right, clicking. Brings it up so I can export it. And I bring it over here. And I import it back in. Bam. Bam. I'm just going to get rid of that map compare. And I'm going to do an access setup as well. I would have thought it would have brought that over. Let me just have a look at that. Hmm. I don't know what this one's in. Uh, that one's better. I'm going to use this one. Of course, we will just we can adjust later on. There we go. It is the same, but it's a little bit different. Um, and this one, at this point, I am going to tuck just a little bit more fuel in at the top end. Yes, I am. I'm just using my page down button. We're going. Oh, that was a mistake there, wasn't it? Shift. Highlight the ones I want. Go up to there too. Go away. Let's up. And we'll page up. And yes, I know that is quite rich in the top end. That's how I do want it. At idle, this one is set up a little bit richer. Um, I found when I'm starting out, I actually often go a little bit on the rich side, set up the tune, and then I'll pull fuel out. And you can just do it by adjusting your target table. I'm reasonably happy. We'll just uh, compare that with over here. So you can see here 13.5 is a 0.91, or almost 0.92. Um, on here, 0.95 is in somewhere in here. That's all right. Really rich at the, when you full throttle it. And out in the revs, looks pretty good to me. I'm pretty happy with that. I am going to set up a dual fuel map and here dual fuel table 
dual fuel table. We're going to turn that on. Dual table. Yes. And we're going to set it up on a virtual auxiliary. So virtual auxiliary one. Perfect. And now I have two fuel maps here. So this is the one that was already in the car. And this is the new one. And I'm just going to grab it from this tune here. Go to the fuel table. This is the main one we're running. Just compare it to the inactive. We're going to go with this one. Export it again. Back to the clipboard. And we'll bring it back in. We're in the right one. These numbers are a lot smaller. Let's bang that in there. Import from clipboard. Bam. Done. I could do the same with the, with the fuel, with the ignition table. Yes, I can. Let's do it. A dual ignition table as well ignition table ignition table setup uh, no connect corrections dual ignition table right there dual table yes and let's put this on virtual auxiliary 2 so you actually have to turn two of them on virtual auxiliary 2 done and is our second table now. Ooh. Let's grab a table. Ignition here. And take this one. Yes, we'll take that. That's what we want. Export it to the clipboard. Back to Josh's tune. Let's see if this actually works, because sometimes they have a bit of a freak out. Yes, please. Done. And you see it's added an extra one at the bottom. Just, just fix that. Access setup. Push OK, and it's, it just fixes it. <laughs> yes, please. We're back to good again. And that's why we go through and check everything, because they do change like that. I'm going to store that. Oh, sorry, I'm going to save. Right, so now I've got some logging turned on. I've got a couple of maps that can be accessed. And you just go down to auxiliary outputs right here. Virtual Auxiliary 1, and you turn that on, and you access the second fuel map, the dual map, the one that I've put in. This will also then allow us to sort out the, um, the wideband setup, and then we can get some data out of it, and I can actually start adjusting the fuel map to a lot closer than it should, than it was. Let's hold there for a moment. Okay, so as a summary for what Josh is going to do after watching this video, he's going to calibrate, check the TPS calibration is good, which I think it's going to be, and check the map sensor calibration is good, just confirm for me, I think they're going to be good, confirm the AVIS flap is switching when he starts the engine, so it should start it, and the flap should move, turn it off and it should drop back um, after a little bit after the drops vacuum um, he's then going to load this program in with the improved logging and he's going to to warm it up and then turn on virtual auxiliary number one which will turn on the different fuel map and start it he may then need to adjust it a little bit so we will, he's going to turn on virtual one, 
we're just going to put test on and when he comes to the fuel so it turns table one sorry in the fuel Why is this not working? It should be it's possibly because it's not running. Let me just double check that I've got that correct. Uh, that's because I've got it on virtual auxiliary too. Oh, that's ignition. Oh, that's good. Fuel corrections. Just check. Virtual Auxiliary 1. He's going to confirm that when Virtual Auxiliary 1 is turned on, that it does switch over in the fuel maps to the second map. So it was just uh, there, inactive. I'll just go down and just switch that over again. I'm going to send it with him with it turned off of course so he's going to confirm that it does switch over in the fuel maps if it needs a bit of an adjustment because we are coming from 70s 80s down to 46 so it might need a bit more fuel poked into it so he's just going to give it across the board the whole lot And page up and he's going to bring that page up until it gives a nice lambda at idle with no fuel control mixture adjustment okay so he's going to be watching in the runtime values fuel closed loop status we want zero fuel correction one way to do that may be to actually turn closed loop lambda off for a little while until he stabilizes in his mixture once it's stabilized the mixture at idle and gives a couple of revs then i want the uh, closed loop lambda to be swapped over to staunch mode and the cylinders allocated correctly of course if josh doesn't want to do that I, he's going to flick me a map back and he's going to let me do it and we'll discuss that process this might end up being a job for team viewer which means i have to get to a better source of internet but that's going to get us moving along he's going to give it a drive and i'm going to be able to look how able to look at the logging properly and we're going to try and trim those fuel corrections off and i'll show you how i can look at the map and go back and forth looking at the logging looking at the maps and adjusting it appropriately so Josh, hope you got that sorted. Of course, I'll talk to you manually as well. Um, you're paying for this, so there's a bit of time done. And uh, we'll continue this process of getting your car running a lot nicer than it does now.